Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Ramoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast. This is the podcast where we have digital discussions for the worlds of social media, pop culture, and sometimes sports. As always, I'm your host, Peter Meliotis, and on Twitter I go as PD Beats. It is Friday the 13th. A movie that I have been waiting to see for a long time has is coming out tonight. Well, it's, it's out today already, and it's Happy Death Day, and I am thrilled to be joined by one of the actresses in Happy Death Day. She plays Danielle, the president of the sorority. We're with Rachel Matthews. Rachel, welcome to Popternative. Thank you for having me. This is so exciting. It is exciting. It's This is like your first feature film. Yes. And it comes out today. Yeah. And the week has just probably been crazy. It's been nonstop. I am overjoyed with the response. I think all of us, you know, going into it, there's, you can't really tell how it's going to end up, especially with Blumhouse. You know, they make so many great movies, oh, but yeah. they speak them out constantly so they can easily get lost as well. So to have the response and the marketing that we've had behind us has been just incredible. No, it's it's been great. And the it's it's one of those movies where when I first saw the trailer it was like right away I have to see this right away it was one of those and I think it's the power of trailers um yeah. that do that but it it's such a unique spin on, on a lot of people compare it obviously the Groundhog Day with Bill Murray on that mm-hmm. concept but kind of put kind of like a, a horror thriller twist on that and yeah. um so yeah talk a little bit about the film and talk a little bit about your character in the film well yeah I mean going off the uh, combination, I think the best way to probably put it would be Groundhog's Day meets Scream Mm. and then a baby. And that would be Happy Death Day. Um, And so it's really fun. I think the thing that people are now discovering while they're seeing it is there's so much more comedy involved that the trailer doesn't really let you see. it kind of hints towards it, but the the movie itself is really so much more of a dark comedy, uh, which I think is so, so fun, uh, especially for a younger crowd, PG-13. It was just very clever. Um, the movie itself, we shot it uh, about a year ago in November, okay. and we shot it in New Orleans for about two months. It was so much fun. I got to play Danielle. As you said, the president of the Kappa sorority, and she's the bitch. She's the mean girl of the movie, but she's so fun, and she's kind of meant to be a tool to break the horror here and there with yeah. a little bit of a comedic bit. So mm-hmm. for me, that was a dream role to be able to play. And your first thought. And how did talk a little bit about the process of you landing this role? I mean, this is a pretty big film for this to be your first feature film, Rachel. Yeah, no, it's incredible. Um, the process was actually very fun. I had been auditioning for a few months out in LA and Terry Taylor was casting and I was able to get in the room. I had great managers at the time. And by the end of my audition, I actually had a full scene that was improvised with Terry Taylor. And I think that's kind of what put it over the edge. Improv's my favorite thing, so to be able to have that. Was it a spontaneous improv? Or did you know that you were gonna do it? No, it was spontaneous. It okay. was, well, once you see the movie, there's a whole scene about chocolate milk oh. during the meeting. And so I had to improvise with Terry Taylor um, a whole scene, and it was incredible. I actually really would love to find the footage for that. It was so fun. She was great to work with. And yeah, I mean, I, it was one of those roles that I feel like for actors, every this only happens once in a blue moon where a part comes across your, your desk and you're like, this is, I need to play this. And you feel it in your gut and you're like, this was meant for me to be able to play this. So oh, absolutely. Um, I had that feeling day one wow. and the stars aligned. So I'm very blessed. I feel so lucky. That's really good. And you've been doing some, you've obviously been doing a lot of prom- like promo. There's been press 
um, this week. And what uh, what has been kind of the hardest thing about this type of role? I mean, you, you said like she's kind of the mean girl. Um, was there something... I mean, a lot of people say, you know, I play the mean girl on screen, but that's totally not um, me in real life. I'm not sure if you categorize yourself in real life as the mean girl. No, I can answer that right now. No, my my parents might say <laughs> otherwise. <laughs> but I would like to say that this was a far reach for me, you know, <laughs> character-wise. Um, but... You have that sass, even in the trailer. We're like, see you at the party tonight. Bye. Like, I'm just Bye. like, oh, man. No, the like, sass is there. I definitely have the sass. The sass I, I have, for sure. It comes out every so often. Um, but I think for me, just going back to, like, playing bitch, I really wanted to play her in a way that she she cares. Yeah. It's coming from a good place, not a bad place. Um, and I hope that the audience kind of sees that, you know, she thinks she's being the best friend, the best sister of the sorority by, by saying those offensive it's things. It's like her job, right? Like sororities. It's job. It is yeah. her goal, you yeah. know, and I don't want to give too much away, but it's like the stakes are high, very high for her in very unrealistic situations, which is obviously where the comedy comes from. Um, but yeah, she's very grounded. She's a grounded girl. I didn't expect there to be like a lot of comedy in it because some of the reviews I was reading, there is like a comedic aspect to the film and there's some funny moments. But yeah. I'm, does it make an effort to keep that kind of suspense thriller perspective throughout the film as well? You know, it does. But then there, I think it's, it drops a lot of it okay. once there's a montage sequence and there's, that's been written up in a lot of the reviews where, you know, tree has now realized she has multiple days. What is she going to do? She has this whole sequence of like all these different things that she is now discovering and challenging herself. And it's goofy. It's fun. And, um, that I think is when the suspense kind of drops and yep. it hits right back up again. Oh wow! So, they do a really good job with kind of blending everything. You, you feel like you're watching multiple different movies because they give you a bit of all of it. It's been a really good couple of years for horror movies and thrillers. Like, it's yeah. been unbelievable. Um, did, did you kind of see it? Cause, but some people could see it kind of a little bit of an, as a negative thing because there's so many films out like... Like, every couple of months, a horror movie comes out, right? So, right. it's like one of those things where it's a saturated market, but at the same time, they can also piggy... The exposure can piggyback off each other. We're definitely piggybacking, 100%. And I think it's a good thing. I do, too. And they're very different. And what I think is great, we're given a platform. And not only that, but there isn't a movie like this out there. Yeah. We also haven't had a fun slasher pick in a while. Yeah. Um, so, in itself, it's kind of bringing back an older genre. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so were you a horror movie fan before you went on um, Happy Death Day? Really? Yeah. Okay, so me horror too. So is we... my favorite genre. Okay, what are your three? Uh, they so don't have to be. They don't have to be tough. But like, are there some that you're like, wow? Because I have about three that um, they're not like my favorite. They're not like the biggest ones ever, but. Um, like Netflix puts out some really good. Like there's some good horror movies on Netflix right now. Like which ones? So have you seen The Invitation? No. You've not seen that one. No. Okay, you have to watch. No. You, have, you have to watch that. Okay. And have you seen Would You Rather? No. How have you not seen these? You're like I'm a huge I horror movie even fan. Heard of, I'm I'm upset. I, I have what? Unacceptable for me. Oh, they're really good. Um, they're like more, I mean, the invitation is more of like an indie one. I mean, would you rather has Brittany Snow who is in, um, uh, uh, pitch perfect and, mm -hmm. but no, it's, uh, those, those are really good. Um, I was a big fan when I, when I was younger, I remember the house of wax remake with oh, Michael Murray. Yes. 
uh, that Paris Hilton's in that too. That was like oh that was good. That was that was one of those, and I was that was at the, the age where it was like, oh my god, like you could just go see horror movies. Like you were at the age where you were like a bit like skeptical if you wanted to see it because like nightmares and everything. Like that one and the like, Amityville Horror, Ryan Reynolds. Those two were like insane. I love it. What about yeah, you? Nothing better than seeing Paris Hilton screaming, crying, and wax. Yeah, I, iconic. It was good. What about what about you? What what are your, some of your favorite horror movies? I think, gosh, there are so many. I think some of the ones that are the most memorable for me growing up. The first scary movie that really scared me was The Birds by Alfred Hitchcock. Yeah. That one got me. I saw it when I was eight, and I couldn't be near a bird again for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, so in that sense, that one was the first one that ever really got to me. I think in terms of quality, The Shining, I hold dear oh, to my you're, heart. So you're bringing the classics so. out. Balance of the Lambs. Okay. And then for most recent, I would have to say The Babadook. The ba really? I like I The Babadook. I thought it was so well done. I liked that it. Scared, that scared me. No, I liked it. Well, I, I, I think the in, I, I think the invitation is gonna scare you because it has a little bit of a like a, oh this could happen feel to things. Oh, and I feel like those are the scariest ones, right? We're like the ones that are not realistic. Yes, a hundred percent. And there's a movie coming out on Netflix called The Babysitter with Bella Thorne. That actually comes out today as well. I want to. Is that so? That's on Netflix. Yeah. Today I might watch that. I yep. that that looks interesting. That's like a can't be like horror comedy movie. Hundred percent. Did no, you see it yet? It, it, no, I haven't okay. seen it. It's been getting really good reviews, so I'm sure it would be right up my alley if it's campy horror. What what is it for you about like horror movies? Like, is it just like the fun aspect of it, the jump scares, the like? What do you like about them? Because there's so many, and like. You're always going to get like, oh, snap. There's always going to be like, oh, man, it scared the, the, the hell out of me. Like, right. all the Insidious movies have at least two, like, really big jump scares. I think there's such a – it's a feeling you don't get from any other type of genre. Some people are so have so much disdain towards it. You know, that's why they will never watch it. It, it makes them feel sick or whatever. But for me, I react in the opposite way. I love it, you know, and – Especially with a group of friends or going to the theater. It's like going on a roller coaster. It's oh. exhilarating. And Are you a fan of roller coasters? Love roller coasters. <laughs> I'm such an adrenaline junkie, okay? Like that's my thing. Yeah. So bungee jumping, riding sharks, scary movie, <laughs> you name it. Like that is sign me up. That's where I'm at. Um so <laughs> fun facts. Fun yeah. fact, I'm actually in Sharknado. Are you in like, are you going to be in like Sharknado 6 or something? Is that uh, foreshadowing? Like possibly. I mean, why not, right? <laughs> I'll be riding one of the sharks that are. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why I find that. I don't know why I find that so funny. Roller coaster, bungee jumping, riding a shark. <laughs> riding a shark. It was actually one of the wildest experiences of my entire life. Oh, you actually have. Rose yes. Sharp? Oh, yeah. Oh, it, it no. actually... <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were... <laughs> that would be really random, like... It would be like the equivalent of being like, you know, bored in the volcano. I haven't done that, but I actually have written a shark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh. Uh, I have a friend... Um, and she's a big, she's a huge shark fan. Like she, she went with her boyfriend and they went like the, the cage, like the one of the cages. That's on my bucket list. They did that. And they had a like, video. They, she told me it wasn't like she loved it, but they were very slow. They didn't do anything. They're just like, like going by like, very slowly. They were like, lucky. I've heard some other horror stories. Uh, well, there's that movie with Mandy Moore. Have you seen that one? I didn't. The 47, yes. was it 47 meters down? It's very good. Yeah. Very, very good. Well, Ruby Modine. Yes. Who's Death Day. Her dad, Matthew Modine, is in that. That's her dad. Yeah. Yes. Oh, man. Le he, and he's a legend now with, with legend. Stranger Things. Uh-huh. And she was in Shameless. Yeah, she still is. She, she just still, wrapped. That, 
Man, there's that. That's awesome. So, how was it? That's another thing too. I, I asked about you. How was the cast? How was the crew? Talk about the whole process of the film. I'm sure, it was just like it seems like on social media. There's a lot of posts of you guys at events. It seems like you guys were pretty tight, pretty close. Oh yeah, we all still hang out. We're a tight knit cast, which is rare, and it made it that much more fun. I think for me personally, all of my scenes were with Tree, with Jessica. Um, and I owe her so much of, you know, just being my support system while we were on set because it was intimidating going into a, a production like this. And, you know, there's new terms, new slang. I'm like, yeah, like block shoot, great. Like, don't know what that is. Um, and she was just such a rock for me the whole time, helping me out with all of it. But, and she set the tone. You know, she set the tone as well as Christopher Landon, and they really did such a great job with that. But everyone was so fun, and we were able to go out, and, and the food in New Orleans is amazing. So we were able to be trying all this. I tried oyster for the first time when I was there. I, there's some mixed feelings about it. Um, but, yeah, we, we still keep in touch, and we're hoping that, with the right numbers and the right amount of money that we get a sequel oh. in, in, in the talks, but. Oh, wow. That's pretty early chatter for sequel. The movies. There was are... early chatter. There is. Um, hmm. Well, I saw the numbers are pretty fantastic. I mean, what, uh, over a million on Thursday and an estimation of about 22 to 26 million just tonight. No. Well, um, or for I don't... Weekend. For the weekend. Sorry, for the weekend. Yes. I was like, that would be insane. No, no, no. For the, for the weekend. And I think yeah, that, her, that... Which is a dream. Yeah. I got... I'm, I still have that riding a shark stuck in my head. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, like, I... <laughs> it, it's pretty <laughs> awesome. Um, but yeah, no, for... Uh, another thing, like, tell us a little bit about yourself. Like, um... About what do you like? Like, did you always want to be an actress? Yes. Um, was there any other? <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's an easy. Okay. Um, I mean, yes and no. I go back to when I was young, and you you see pe papers from school where it's like, "What do you want to be when you grow up?" And I always was writing actress, and I knew that was what I wanted to do, and I loved performing. But there was also a big part of my life that I dedicated to sports for a good amount of time. Oh yeah, did you play sports? I did. What'd I did you play? I, I only played on all male teams growing up. Okay. I had to be on all the teams with my brother. We're 18 months apart. So I played football, um, which was, I still love playing football and baseball for 11 years. Did you ever play hockey? I wanted to, my dad played hockey. So he taught me. Um, and I'm, I love ice skating and doing all of that. So no, but in another life. Hey, there's a um, big hockey player with the same last name as you. Maybe, uh, Austin maybe Matthews. Football. So I'm like, Hey, yeah. there's, there's some options here. Absolutely. Um, no, that's awesome. So you were, a, you were like a pretty like serious athlete. I was, growing a, tomboy. I was a hardcore tomboy. And then I... <laughs> Yeah, I, I seriously picked up the game of tennis and thought that's what I was going to go to school for. I thought I was going to get a full ride uh, for tennis to college, and that was a path that I was following. And I ended up breaking my back and kind of just changed from there. But it was for the best. I don't think I would have ever been a very good professional tennis player if I ever got it that far. Um, and, yeah, once that all happened, I, I fully – you know, gave everything to this craft and haven't looked back since. That is awesome. Well, Rich, we'll wrap up soon, but thank you so much for joining us. And, uh, yeah, no, it's Thanks for having me. It's pretty awesome. I mean, it's your first Canadian podcast. I know. It's also, it's like my second podcast. It's, it's almost podcast. like, I mean, how, new for me. how cool would it have been if this was your first podcast? I know, I know. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> um, no, but seriously, I know you're really, really busy. Um, I mean, the movie comes out today, and 
we're chatting about it. So it's unbelievable. So thank you so much for coming on Popternative. Um, where could people follow you on social media? Um, uh, Great. Just do some plugs and plug some stuff. Here's some plugs. So my Instagram handle is Rachel Lynn Matthews. And yeah. my Twitter is Raylin93. The whole Twitter game is something I'm like trying to get better at. So. Yeah. We've had this conversation before. Yeah. 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 Uh, but I, your, your Instagram game's strong. Good for you with the Instagram. It's getting games. better. It's getting better. Awesome. Well, again, congratulations and all the best uh, in your future as well. I'm sure right now, you know, striking while the iron's hot, I'm sure there's a lot of auditions, a lot of opportunities for new movies here and there. Yes. Awesome. Well, hopefully yeah. we have you back on talking about another your next project. Pe- another project. Another I've- project. I'm writing one right now that I'm going You're to You're writing be- a project. Wow. I am. So we'll see. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for checking out this episode. Happy Death Day is out now um, in theater, so go go watch it and support Rachel and the rest of the cast and crew. Uh, it's It just looks like such a fun film, and it's Friday the 13th, and the it, it, it's like you can't get a better release date for it, you too. You can't go wrong. You, you can't. can't go wrong. What, no. are we, what else are you going to do on your <laughs> ride, on. ride a shark. <laughs> but seriously make sure you uh follow uh, rachel on all of her social media popternative.com is where you can find brand new episodes and brand new content uh, youtube.com slash popternative as well twitter on facebook until next time this is rich matthews and pd beats signing off enjoy the rest have a great weekend everyone thank you for tuning in to popternative Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.